Hello, my soccer universe on this Christmas morning. Yes, the Premier League makes it that I even do a video on Christmas because it seemed like just doing the right thing in a way. And let me wish you uh, a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever in case you were celebrating. I hope you had or you're having a good day on that. But we're talking here about everything happening in England. And you wonder, I'm wearing a Manchester City jersey. Uh, they didn't even play in England. Well, they played at the Club World Cup and won the darn thing. And we'll talk briefly about that as well. And all the other results in the league were going their way. So to me, uh, while they may not have done much in the Premier League, they are the big winners. And yes, they are world champions. So there you go. Uh, in a way as well. There were also some really interesting movements to the bottom of the table where all these teams that we have been saying they're going down, they're going down, they're too little for the Premier League. Um, they all got very, very respectable results in there. And in a way, Sheffield United, by not winning at Aston Villa, are kind of the loser of that whole thing. So uh, really weird stuff there as well. And then we have, of course, your usual train wrecks that I really don't want to spend too much time about because uh, almost every uh, talk show or every podcast that I listen to, they focus so much on City and Manchester United. And I'm not interested in that because it's not fun talk, 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 talk talking about crap teams and how, 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 how they're better, but it just keeps the cycle going. I just mentioned it. Those two teams are currently absolutely crap. And the big question is, who is more in trouble? And I actually would say, just by looking at, at the table, I would actually argue uh, Manchester United are slightly better off because at least they're getting uh, some results. But yeah, maybe Chelsea at some time can get something more exciting going in any way. It's not fun watching or talking about these teams. But I already talked too much about them. Let's go to Saudi Arabia, where Manchester City went to the Club World Cup and kind of steamrolled the... Uh, competition. To be honest, I was actually hoping that Al Ahli, who made this big surprise that they ousted Al Ittihad, you know, the team of Benzema and, and so on. I mean, not a bad team, uh, and kind of the host nations team. I really thought that they can do something, and then they end up losing to Fluminense. Uh, in the semis, I guess a little bit against the run of play. But I actually think that Al Ahli probably could have given Manchester City a little bit more of an opposition. Manchester City, yes, it was not convincing against the Urawa Red Diamonds. Um, you know, it was an own goal in there in the end. They get a 3 0 win. And then in the final, what can I say? I mean, if after one minute, it's already 1 0 for City, there is no way that Fluminense, you know, and. There's some interesting players. I mean, there's a Marcelo in there. In you uh, rec recognize some players, but that's the big downer at, at the moment of the state of global soccer. Uh, that a team like Fluminense doesn't have exciting talents, but more old uh, players or players that are just not good enough for Europe. And for that reason, the Club World Cup is not has not been a competitive tournament for now at least ten years. They give it their all in these games. It's just no man to be. City, yeah, it was a Nino on, on goal and Foden and Al Alvarez make it a 4 0 score. And Manchester City, a 7 0 aggregate score over their two games. Uh, can controls that just way too much above. And this is also, you see the discrepancy that this is a tournament that's huge, especially in South America, where everyone is talk, talking about. And it's a non entity here in Europe because here, yeah, we go there, we get a day, and then we can wear the golden patch. That's what this is all about at the moment. And yeah, maybe reform is needed. We'll get a Club World Cup, whether it's a better competition. That is something I probably will have to say for another video. I'm semi excited about this tournament because I think it will have the same flow that it will be all Euro, Europeans. We need the balance of power. It needs to be addressed. And I guess Saudi Arabia is trying to do something on that. But you also wonder how this is ha ha happening. Uh, a quick one also. Club, Le uh, Club Leon. Probably a little bit of this disappointment lo losing to Rava Red. But uh, you know, for, for me it's always interest, more interesting at this Club World Cup. Which team actually makes it to the final. And I'm uh, really at the point 
where as much as I would like to see the South Americans ch uh, challenging and be a better competition towards the uh, European teams, that I'm very much rooting even against the South Americans and I want to see an African or Asian team going far uh, just to open it up a little bit. And even if Club Leon uh, from Mexico would have made it, and I really think this is not a good showing, but you know, I, I know too little about Leon. But you know, you went there for one game, should have played one bit more, maybe against another team to make up for that. Yeah, the Club World Cup in this uh, goodbye and good riddance. Um, I hope we, I mean, I understand why the format is the way it is. Let's hope that the new format will be a little bit more exciting. Then we have another cup comp, comp competition that I want to talk about before we actually go into the Premier League action, which is the League Cup or the EFL Cup or the Carabao Cup. <laughs> I don't like to use the, you know, the sponsor in the name. And I made a very short, short video. I hope I don't forget to put the link up there. Um, I always call it the world's most unnecessary competition because at the moment uh, most teams feel second string squads and so it's kind of blah, you at least get awarded with a, rewarded with a European spot. Uh, but I have decided to look at it a little bit closer because you know there is a title giving out as a little bit hanging and sometimes it's interesting and I have, have to say the action this time around was kind of in interesting. I really think that the West London teams deprived us of something really, really interesting in the semis. On the other side, yeah, uh, that's what it is. Um, I would have loved to see it in a West London semi-final, but we didn't get that either. But what, what, what the mean is, uh, Everton were really on a high going in and probably this was their really big chance to get actually a trophy. However, they have to fight hard against Fulham to even make it into uh, the penalty shooter. There's no over overtime, Beto equalizing 80, 80 second, and then uh, it's an epic penalty shooter uh, where uh, the Cordova read on the fourth penalty for Fulham, and Fulham were going second. We're missing, and so Nana actually could have won it and misses really, really badly. And then Carlos Venetius could eek, eek, and it ends as it usually ends in those cases once it gets into the Southern South 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 the team that goes first very often loses and Idrissa Gay misses the penalty and Adarbio uh, puts Fulham into the ne ne next round. Why I'm um, a little bit sad about that because we could have had a Liverpool or Merseyside Derby in the semis, which we didn't get. Uh, Middlesbrough easy over Port Vale 3-0 and then Chelsea New Newcastle uh, on paper, a really great game. Um, Newcastle went there, Callum Wilson got the goal, looked like they are cruising and then it's a triple miss mistake that allows Mudrik to equalize in stoppage time. And Kieran Trippier actually steps up and then also sees his penalty safe and then Richie another one and Chelsea move on and you really wonder that this Chelsea, Chelsea side that is not doing much they are already in the semis and we already see the luck of the draw is definitely going their way there as well and then Liverpool against West Ham you know this is a West Ham team that I, th I think uh, ousted Arsenal and then you get the draw that you have to go to Liverpool not fun Liverpool actually with a very complete performance very good um just rolling over. And the question is, this was a good chance for West Ham to get another title. Why do you feel a second string squad? Wouldn't it be better if you would have played the full string squad? Because at the moment that you make then the changes, you're already 2-0 down. Soboslai, of course, getting the first one, Curtis Jones and Kakbo, 3-0. At that point, it was done and uh, I, I didn't even watch the rest of the game anymore. The semis. And now just look at the alternatives. If uh, Newcastle would have won, we would have Middlesbrough against New Newcastle, which is a, a northeast Dor 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 Derby, which I really would have enjoyed. And of course, we would have gotten Merseyside Derby. Uh, the Chelsea get Middlesbrough is just a lot of luck of draw. Many say this looks like a Liverpool-Chelsea final. Let's see about that. I mean, Liverpool is probably the big favorite. The way Chelsea are playing, I wouldn't actually be surprised if Middlesbrough wouldn't uh, do something there as well. But let's see and games will be played early you know it's a two-legged semi-final semi which is another why do we need a two-legged semi-final here but yeah uh, we have the first leg on 9th of 10th of january and then two weeks later we have the second leg let's go 
back into the Premier League. Uh, it was a stretched out round because, you know, Christmas Day, da da da. You don't want a one a play, so it started on Thursday with Crystal Palace in the door. There was Brighton playing a 1 1 Villa against Sheffield United. Uh, surprisingly, only a 1 1 draw and a late one at that. Uh, Saniolo getting equalized in the 97th minute after Archer with more or less the first chance of Chef Sheffield United. Putting them ahead in the 87th. Yes, Villa were uh, missing many chances, but these are definitely points drop. And this was a huge uh, thing because that actually. You could have gone first now in hindsight. And these are points drop that, you know, after all the great wins that you have, this kind of puts a little, a little bit of break and actually kind of confirms probably will I not, not quite there to challenge, but you know, top four that I still is, I think is very much in their reach. West Ham make up for the turgid performance against Liverpool by um, winning against United. A United team where Garnacho missed two good chances in the first half. Especially for the first one. I don't know how he didn't get his legs better sorted. Then West Ham slowed the game down and struck Jared Bowen. And then just a few minutes later, uh, Paqueta sets up Kudus. And it's 2-0 West Ham and Motoro for United. However, the takeover... Uh, oh, it's not, 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 not a takeover. The shares are sold to the Ineos group. That's about to go through and they take on sporting control is despite being a minority shareholder. So interesting parts there as well. But as I said, United does not look good. Um, it will be a hard, hard uh, ask to even make it into, into your when Champions League is a must. And Eric Ten Hag is also not doing himself favors by, you know, making unrealistic comments after every game. Um, we had Burnley getting a huge tunnel win at Fulham. Uh, not very totally unexpected because Fulham played midweek. Uh, however, Fulham was on a good run before that. So uh, that, in a way, a little bit of a down. A Luton, a 1-0 over New Newcastle. Another, you know, two of those uh, uh, winning that everyone said they're going, going down. There's always this point where the teams that just got promoted, they had, had a best start, they get something rolling and then you hope that there's no other team. Or if you are of the teams that were a little bit up, that you hope that you have a good enough form to not be sucked back in. Because I think all of these teams will pick up a few more points. Um, one of these teams that could get sucked is Forest, uh, losing 2-3 at Bournemouth very late in store, stoppage time, you know, having sacked Steve Cooper, now bringing Nuno Espirito Santo, yeah, let's see how this will work out. Um, but as I said, I watched in Spurs against Everton, uh, it was a really good Spurs at the, at, at, at the beginning with Richarlison scoring against his former club, first, you know, jumping and then, no, 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 we are not Celsius, as bringing, and then Son, a little bit later, heads one in as well, and there was a lot of pressure, but then, the longer the game went, the more chances fell Everton's way. This was built as a, um, a matchup between teams of very different styles. In the end, Gomes pulls one back. A Calvert Lewin goal was disallowed because of a foul. So it was a little bit luck for Spurs there at the end, but they get a win, which was largely and they move in fourth uh, place. However, Manchester City have a game in hand. Um, and then it was all about the big one between Liverpool and Arsenal, which was a really, especially for the really, really entertaining game, going uh, back and forth, up and down. Maybe not that many great goal, uh, sco uh, scoring chances, but the goals came early. Odegaard free kick, Gabriel heads it in. Then Arsenal had a few chances there to um, probably even open up the, uh, up the lead, but Liverpool were also pushing and got the equalizer. However, before that, there was uh, one of those bonehead decisions by, by the referee where Odegaard is touching the ball with his hand in the box and I don't know why this didn't get looked at again. Maybe because the play continued for a minute more, but still, this needs to be looked at. Uh, there's no quick question about it. This was a clear penalty. Um, on the balance of play, I have to say that Liverpool had probably overall the better chances. I mean, the goal by Salah was really well done. I think it was a, a, a long ball by uh, Van, Van Dijk to Alexander to Salah, to, to Salah who then yanks it in. Um, in the second half, I think Liverpool first pressed, but then Arsenal were always hitting on on the break. It was really back and forth. You could see this is a really two good, very evenly matched uh, teams. 
And while Arsenal may have had them more of the ball, Liverpool had the better chances, especially for on, on, on the break. But I think Odegaard, uh, one of those, lost the ball. And then suddenly our, uh, Liverpool had a four-on-one where Alexander-Arnold hits the crossbar. But I think this could have been better play. This needed to be a goal uh, in this situation. In the end, it ends 1-1. And the real winner of that game is City. And then yesterday, just before we had our Christmas celebration, because in Austria we, play, we celebrate on 24th, Wolves win 2-1 against Chelsea. More trouble for Chelsea. Um, Chelsea should have taken the lead if Sterling passes the ball. Then Lamina gives them the lead, and it was about to happen. I mean, as, to, as much as Chelsea tried, um, they never really then created chances. Doherty uh, makes it 2-0 for Wolves, kind of settling game. It was a huge stoppage time. Where Nkunku pulls one back, but it was not meant to be. And Wolves 2-1 also well on, uh, you know, moving more up into midfield. And now if you look at the uh, expected standings after these rounds, we see, you know, Manchester City still the favorites. Arsenal, Liverpool right up there as well. Villa probably uh, will manage a top four spot ahead of Spurs. Newcastle United for at the moment the outside looking in, but you know we have to see how the FA Cup and all that falls. There will be more spots for English teams, and if English teams uh, win some European comp competition, it makes it even easier as well. On the bottom, Burnley, Luton, Sheffield still, but you see Forest dangling there dangerously. Everton, I think, will be saved. I'm more worried about like a team like Crystal Palace if they go on a bad run, that they could fall into that. And then we have the Boxing Day fixtures already tomorrow. Uh, I actually will probably want to watch United against Aston Villa. Uh, Burnley, Liverpool could be interesting, but I expect a mauling. Sheffield United against Luton will be a tight one for sure. Bournemouth, Fulham, Newcastle, Forest. Interesting stuff for sure. We have Everton against Manchester City. So Manchester City coming back as World Club champ champions. And then actually Brighton Spurs. That could be an open one. A uh, hipster's derby in a way. And Arsenal West Ham on Thursday. So I think quite some interest. And it will be hard to choose between those two. I actually wish that, uh, you know, swap the Chelsea Palace game out there. But I guess that you kind of have two London derbies on the same day. But hey, so be it. In any case, that was it from me from England. I'm not sure if I will do a video after the boxing around, maybe a short video. Let's see about that. In any case, please add anything you want. Uh, if you th think I missed something in the comments below, give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.